Okay, so is there any underage porn on Pornhub? No. Absolutely not. Zero. Zero. The, the, the... And, and how do you verify? Like, how do you know out of all the uh, porn that's on Pornhub that nobody that ever shot the video at the time was under 18 years old? Sure. So, yeah. I, we can, we, we can know, both answer that we sure one. sure can. Go ahead, Alex. You um, go first. But I think it's really important that people understand that to upload content to Pornhub, it's actually, um, it's, it's quite difficult. And that's by design. Um, it's not just like, okay, I can kind of like you do on Instagram or on mm -hmm. social media where I have something on my phone. I just want to throw it up there for public consumption. It's quite the opposite. So in order to be able to upload anything to Pornhub, you first have to become verified. So that means you have to go through a program where you have to scan um, an ID. You have to make sure that there's a likeness test that matches the ID of the person that's on there to the face that's um, of the uploader. Only once you've gone through that process and that's been verified by a third party that we use called Yodi, um, can you then get to the point where you're actually able to upload. And then again, there's a number of different checkpoints that a piece of content has to go through um, before it ever goes live. So these are things like verifying the consent and identity of every single person that appears in a scene. We then scan the content against a number of different databases um, that contain hashes. So to make sure that there's no known um, illegal content of any kind. So that could be... How do you know how old the person was in the porn when it was shot, at the time that it was shot? Because uh, somebody could have uh, uh, give you the porn and today I'm 19 years old, but when the girl shot it, she was 15 and a half. H how do you regulate that? So the ID has to be current of the time that the, that the uh, paperwork is submitted. I know, but how do you know when the video was shot, when the porn was shot? Because sure. the, there's, do you want to talk about yeah, well, it's important more? to understand the, yeah. the, 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 the legal regulations that are behind this. So mm -hmm. first of all, for any adult content that's produced in the United States, uh, the regulations require that prior to the shooting of the content, mm -hmm. that there is a form filled out that has age, identity, consent, and rights release for the use of that, of that content. Uh, what many people don't know about Pornhub is that all the content is moderated. Mm -hmm. So unlike YouTube or, or X, you can't just upload something. It has to be reviewed by a moderator. And the moderator is looking at, number one, the documentation. But this is just to understand that the scale of this effort, right? I always say this is a company that really puts its money where its mouth is when it comes to keeping the platform safe. This is not cheap to do this. We're in an age now where trust and safety is being reduced on many of the major mm -hmm. platforms. Yeah. We're investing, I can say this from the ownership perspective, we're investing more heavily than ever. Um, but what but how do you do that though? Like what I want to know is, you know, and by the way, just so you know, I, I'm right now while I'm speaking to you, I'm looking at stories that's coming up. So like right now I just typed in, uh, this is my first time ever going on this thing called traffic, trafficking hub after I saw that. I saw the 2.2 uh, 2 .2 million people here based on what's on Wikipedia, right? Mm -hmm. So if I go over here, then a story comes up with New York Times, the children of Pornhub. Right. Okay. So I clicked on that. So mm -hmm. this story right here. Right. Can you can you zoom in, Rob? What's what's this story about that New York Times wrote? Do you guys know? Of course. Yeah. I mean, what's it about? that's the story. That's the story, by the way, that gave the opportunity to purchase this company because it led to some really significant reforms. Mm -hmm. So prior to the publication of this opinion piece, and that's what it is. It's not a news piece. It's an opinion piece by by Nicholas Kristof. Um, Pornhub did not require the ID for all uploaded content. Mm -hmm. uh, within weeks of the publication, this is well before we acquired the company, uh, the, the company took a pretty dramatic step, which is it removed 8 million pieces of content where they didn't hold the ID for the uploader. So the rest of the industry, which continues on, by the way, doing exactly what was happening pre-2020, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. said, your site's gonna die. Nobody is going to upload content if they have to provide their ID where every single uploader has to provide ID. Right. And in fact, Pornhub transformed the user-generated content industry as a result of this and other challenges, which is, by the way, exactly what should happen in the tech industry. Problems should be identified. So like, I don't, I don't hold any grievance against the identification of problems and, and challenges. That's, that's how you get better, right? And what happened, this is my description, it's only, only my opinion, is that you had the content creator revolution, which mm -hmm. has changed the internet. Right. It collided with the adult industry, entertainment industry neither were really ready for each other. So from the content side, the creators said, we're gonna get eyeballs and monetization. The adult industry said, we're gonna get content. Mm -hmm. And figuring out how those two go together with the kind of safeguards that we have now, that took time to happen. I think we really, as the system exists today, not historically, not a 2020 New York Times article, how it exists today on the ground 
is an example for the rest of the content creation industry to so follow. So if you go a little lower, because I, st I still want to figure this out. So go sure. a little, uh, is Sue and Visa, go, look, go up, Rob, let me see what it says. Is Sue and Visa the best way to shut down Pornhub? BOLOX versus uh, targeting credit card companies in a war against online sex traffic mm -hmm. and have pushed too far it can cause unintended harms. Go a little lower. The story that I still want to get to, zoom in right, okay, second paragraph. The article denied a firestorm protest and litigation that deeply impacted a Online pornography industry survivors and anti-trafficking advocacy organization, many have ties to Christian right and uh, anti-pornography efforts of the 1970s and 80s, gather more than 2 million signatures. on Okay, we just read that. And survivors of the anti-trafficking legal claims of Pornhub's parent company, MindGeek, seeking millions of dollars in damages, notably Serena Fletes, who was 13 years old when her ex-boyfriend uploaded a sexually explicit video on Pornhub, brought a novel trafficking lawsuit against Visa. She alleged that the credit card company who's provided MindGeek its payment networks knowingly monetize these images for profit. So Alexander, you've been there since 2013, mm -hmm. right? When you were there, were you aware that these kinds of things was happening on Pornhub? On Pornhub? Uh, I mean, these are things that we're not really, unfortunately, able to, to talk about in too much detail because these are about um, ongoing litigation. So what I'm able to comment on is is limited. Um, but so is, there's a there's a there's an active litigation sure. going on right now. There's lawsuits mm -hmm. that relate back to how the site used to be yeah. right. prior to the acquisition. And I'm asking you because you've been there since 2013. So I'm kind of glad you're here because of that. Course. How much have you noticed culturally the place changing? Because there is no way you're working there and you don't know this is out there, right? You would know if you're working there that this is out. I there. I mean, what I can tell you is that yeah. I've seen a tremendous evolution in Pornhub since I've been there. Um, I've been there, like you said, since 2013 in very different capacities. Like when I started there, I was working um, in social media and customer service. So I can say that I'm you know, very proud to work for a company where I was able to, to grow in the way that I have up to an executive level today. Um, but during that time, more importantly, like, yes, like Saul said, there's been colossal evolution in the way not only the, the adult industry um, you know, moderates itself, and how trust and safety has evolved, <sighs> yeah. but also social media in general, right? Like this is a topic that we're really, um, that we're that we're dealing with as a larger society, right? Like how do we keep online spaces safe? And I really do believe that we are pioneering a way that what that can look like. I got a big announcement to make. The property I'm on right now, we've been working on buying this property for the last three years. It's one of its last kind in America, why? Uh, it's on 11 acres, it's got two hangars, it's on an airport, upgrades of $7 million made here. That's going to be the new headquarters of Value Tamen, Manek, Ben David Consulting, the podcast, the whole nine. And what we wanted to do, we want to find a way to celebrate this as a new headquarters with inviting you to an event on November 5th, which is election night. A lot of different things people will be talking about, business owners, what's going to happen if it goes this way? What's going to happen if it goes that way? So imagine 2,000 people being here. Let me show you around. Some of you will have a private meeting with me. That's the elite. That's going to be a few of you. Some will get a private tour the entire office from us. There's a hangar in the back. So you come up here. Imagine there's going to be a couple major tents, 40 feet by 100 feet, where some of the people that are buying general tickets will be there. But over here inside the hangar is where the podcast will be held. This entire thing will be open like it is right now. Inside of it, myself, the PBD podcast crew, some of the super VIPs will be invited to go upstairs in a section that we have that's got a bar, a restaurant, food, you know, kitchen. You're eating, you're watching it from all the way up there while we're doing the podcast down here in the hangar. So imagine in this room, there's a thousand people, right? While we're going through this whole thing. Conversation, it's gonna be from 6 p.m. is when it starts. All the way up to two o'clock in the morning, who knows, maybe we go three, four o'clock in the morning because a lot of things that's gonna be going on. And by the way, do you know why we're not cutting this? We're on an airport. These are planes, we have to hear because right here is the airport. And FYI, Messi plays right there at that stadium right behind us. There's five ticket tiers that you can purchase. Each one's got more things to offer. But even locally, there's general tickets to buy for just $75. Bring your uh, wife, bring your husband, bring your family, bring your friends. There's one caveat after you buy the ticket. When you buy the ticket and you come on November 5th, you have to wear Future Looks Bright gear. I'm talking Future Looks Bright hat, a shirt, doesn't matter. You're gonna have to show, I got some kind of Future Looks Bright gear because we want everybody here to spread the message and the energy of optimism around the world, back to their states, wherever you're going to be. So November 5th, click on the link above or below, 
get registered. And if you're watching this saying, well, Pat, I like to travel private. Can I bring my private jet here? Five of you guys will be after you buy your ticket, then you can ask us. And that's only available to the tickets at the highest level possible to bring your jet and park it here. So having said that, get your tickets and I cannot wait to see you November 5th, 6 p.m. at our new headquarters in Fort Lauderdale. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye, bye-bye. So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here.